Well, hey y'all, by popular demand, we are gonna make some ghee today. And ghee is a wonderful way to preserve butter. And it's spelled G-H-E-E. -E. But I have two pounds of butter unwrapped in my pan. And this is an uh, old, it was my grandma's, it's older than me. It's the bottom of her pressure cooker. I ditched the lid because it was dangerous. It was gonna kill somebody. But I love this to make ghee. You want to use a heavy bottom pan because you do not want precious commodities to scorch. That is a no-go, we don't want that. What I do save is the packages that the butter comes out of, and I fold them back on themselves and put them in a Ziploc and keep them in the, in the drawer in the refrigerator, and they're great for if you just need to butter something real quick, like if you're gonna butter a pan to put a cake in, but hey, waste not, want not. So I have this turned on to medium. Now, ghee is something that you do not want to walk away from. Don't go check Facebook and don't go put your clothes in the dryer. You want to stand here with it. Now you can stir it until it's completely melted and then you cannot stir anymore um, because that is going to upset the, uh, well, let me, let me tell you what's going to go on in ghee. Let me keep my eye on this as well. Whenever you're making ghee, the first step, it turns into clarified butter. And that's whenever the, uh, the foam on the top, the milk proteins will come out and you can scrape those off and you have that beautiful, beautiful, clear, clarified butter, which is the best thing when you have a fresh lobster tail that dip that in, so good. But you can stop there. But to get ghee, which is shelf stable, uh, for up to a year in your pantry with the door shut on it where it doesn't get any light or You can freeze it. They say indefinitely, but y'all did skips used up so uh, quickly. I don't think you could uh, It's not gonna last indefinitely at my house But the uh, let's see the in in India Way back before Jesus was born. This is how they came up with how to um save their butter. Whenever you're making ghee, you know, it's a three, you have the, the proteins that come off at the top that I'll remove, then you have the clarified butter. When you continue to cook that, the rest of the lactose ingredients and, and the, any other uh, properties that are in there other than the butter oil will go to the bottom. And whenever they get to the bottom and they start to turn kind of a, kind of a pecan brown, and your uh, ghee in the middle gets a real golden color and it's clear and you can see through it. And I'll figure out how to get this camera tilted where y'all don't fall in. And I'll try to show you how, how that looks. Now I'm gonna cook this on medium and I'm gonna keep my eye on it. And whenever we get back together, I'm gonna turn it back, I'm gonna turn it low so it, I don't wanna burn this. I do have my oven turned on 200 degrees and I have my ball jars in there that I'm gonna use uh, just out of, out of precaution and just to be double dog sure, I've got the, the rings, the lids, and the jar, the clean dry jars in there uh, just to sterilize them to make double dog sure that they are completely sterilized because you don't want any impurities in this and you don't want not one smidge of water because that will make it uh, go bad and you'll lose all this all this stuff you've done it will be for naught so i'll turn y'all off and we'll get back together and I, i'll i'll show you when it starts to bubble on the top and how we're going to take that off so see y'all back here in a minute okay y'all it is completely melted and you can see that the milk solids are just starting you see the white it's just starting to do its thing. So I have it on about three, between three and four. So I've turned my fire down on that. So from this point on, I'm not gonna stir it. You don't stir it because this is where you want the, uh, the layers to form. So I'm just gonna let this sit here and simmer. And whenever we get ready to, to skim these off the top, uh, we'll get back together and, and we'll show you what that looks like. So see you back in a little bit. I'm just going to let you watch this for just a, a little bit so you can see how the milk proteins are, or milk solids are starting to bubble and come to the top. 
and we steam up. Alrighty, I'm going to start trying to see if I can get this foam off and try to do this with one handed. You see the, um, you see the butter. Let me see if I can scoot this around. I look down in there. You see that, how it's just still doing its little business, how it's still bubbling away. Okay, I'm going to just skim across the top. And I'm not throwing this away. I'm putting it in a little bowl because this is, this is good. You don't want to waste this. This is good. Now, I have made this with Amish salted butter. It was very, very good. But it does take quite a while to do this process because the the salt, it, it took, gosh, y'all, this will probably take, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes. Whenever I made it with the salted butter, it took almost 45 minutes to do this process. But whenever I was finished, I had a really good product in the foam, it was very salty, but I used that whenever I was cooking potatoes. Because, you know, potatoes love salt. They take more salt than pretty much anything else. You see, I'm not stirring it. I'm just barely skimming across the top. All right. And I still have it on about a three and a half. Three and a half. So I've not changed my heat. I've not messed with it. All right, I'm going to continue to do this, and when we're through with this process and we get to the next thing, I'll turn y'all back on. Well, all righty, almost all of the milk solids and the water have cooked out, and you see I have a cereal bowl that's about, oh, almost halfway full of that, that foamy stuff. So I'm just going to let this sit here, and see how, ooh, your phone, you're fogging up again. Uh, it's a nice... Uh, deep yellow golden color or well, yellow color. So I'm going to cook this down until it gets the The color and it'll be clear and I'll, I'll show y'all back what that looks like now. I turned on that overhead light so maybe y'all could see this a little better But you can start to see the bottom now this this spoon. I'm just barely Sticking down there, but can you see where you're just starting to see the bottom down there? It's getting clear. So that's what we're wanting one of the reasons I like to use this old um, pan is that my other uh, saucepan I use is dark. I could not see whenever it's starting to do this glorious thing that it does in a dark pan. So, because this is a, um, whatever this old pressure cooker thing is made out of, I can see that. Anyway, it's really starting to get clear down on the bottom. Okay, y'all. I think it is done, and I I can see through the clearness down there, I can see that those, the brown that's still on the bottom is kind of a pecan color. I'm gonna turn this a little bit. I'm not gonna disturb it. Can you see the brown that's on the bo very bottom? Can y'all see that? Okay. Oh, I wish I could show y'all this. I wish y'all were here. Y'all get here just here in a minute, and we'll do this together. But anyway, this is what we're this is what we're looking for so i'm going to turn my fire off and i'm going to set this over to the edge on the other burner where it, it can cool for all oh, three or four minutes and then we'll get back together and we'll we'll jar it up see y'all back in a minute okay y'all it's been a couple minutes and it's cooled down just a little bit and there's still just a little bit of that foam on the top now if i was just doing this for us our use, I would leave this here, but I really want to show you. I'm going to come over there where y'all are here in just a second. I really, really want to show you. So I'm hoping that, I'm hoping this works. Y'all cross your fingers. Okay, let me put this aside. Okay, here we go. Let's see if this, can y'all see? Oh, I don't know. Can you see the golden brown? See the color it is? See the that stuff on the bottom? That is what you want right there. Okay, now I had cooked these in the oven. You know, I washed them and did all that stuff you do to it. But I cooked these in the oven for about 20 minutes just to make double dog sure everything was okie dokie. Now, one thing, also, I put my uh, aluminum 
funnel in it and I also put my ladle in there. So I'm just going to very carefully tilt this. And I'm going to label these. And of course, you, you're, we're not going to can it. We're not going to water bath it. We are going to seal it well. And then we're going to store it in a, a cool pantry with the door shut that the light doesn't touch. And of course, I told y'all that they say it can stay in the... Um, in the freezer indefinitely. And I'm gonna take some of this up to my mother. Now they say, now I'm not a doctor and I don't play one on the TV, but they say people that have trouble with lactose and dairy sometimes can have ghee and it does not cause them any digestive issues. So if that is a consideration, please do your own homework. And someone's gonna ask, why in the Sam Hill would you go through all of this trouble well, other than I think it's fun. What if you have gone to the store and you have gotten butter and you froze it, you did your due diligence because you don't never know what's going to happen these days with the power outages and things like that, and you put it in your freezer and the power goes out and it's out too long, you're going to lose your butter. So this is a shelf-stable way to have good butter. One of the other wonderful things about it, if you camp, you can take this with you in your camper and then you can use it exactly like butter. You can use this in any recipe that would you would use butter and it makes the best, I'm trying not to move my pan here, grilled cheese sandwiches and just anything you'd use butter, butter for. And it does have tons and tons of vitamin A and D in it. It just really has a has a lot of good healthy product uh, product products. Well, y'all know I'm talking. Y'all, it's just good for you. It tastes good. And it's creamy, and it smears real well on on bread. Now, I tell you what, I am gonna do. I thought I had everything over here. I'm going to get my tea strainer. Y'all just hang it. It's right behind y'all. I wish y'all could hand it to me. Let me get my tea strainer. Where you at? Well, I tell you what, I did not sterilize that. It's clean in the drawer, but I did not sterilize it. So I am not going to do that. I'm just going to be extra careful not to get any of those, those solids on here. One reason why you would want to make ghee instead of buying it at the store, I went on the internet and I looked on, uh, I don't know if you're supposed to say brand name stores or, you know that big store we have to go to that we don't like it, but we gotta go anyway? Them, you can buy a 13 ounce jar of ghee, y'all, it's that big and that big, $20.10 plus shipping. So, obviously, this is a better way to do it. Now this container right here is going to be the one that's probably gonna have a few more milk solids in it. And so that's the one that we're going to use first because I'm, um, it, it'll be fine for us. And But my mother has lactose problems, so I'm going to take one of these other ones up to her. Alrighty. I'm going to let this cool, and I will show you what it looks like whenever it is uh, completely cooled down and ready to go in the cupboard. And then we'll, we'll make us a grilled cheese sandwich, or we'll, we'll make something with it. So I'll see you all back when we're ready to do that. Alrighty, y'all, I want to show you what this looks like whenever it's it's completely uh, cooled off. Now, this is from a batch that I made in April. And you see how it's solidified. You see how the, the color is. Now, this is the foam. When this sets up, you will not be able to tell it from the rest of these. So, I always write foam on that one. But look, look, that's hot. Hang on, that's hot. I'm going to do it anyway. Look how beautiful that is, y'all. That is so pretty. Now, when you're uh, putting up butter to can, which I don't, and don't ask me because I don't know. There, there's a lot of people, rebel canners, that do that, and I think it's great. And uh, that I, I'm, I'm just going to leave it right there. Uh, check with your extension service if you want to do that. But when you're putting up butter, I know that you will, uh, every, every once in a while, 15, 20 minutes or so, walk by and, and turn it over and shake it so it won't separate and stay separated 
whenever it's completely done. But y'all uh, do your own due diligence on that. But I'm gonna show you these um, these burnts that came out of here. Let me see if I can. It's really kind of, well, they're kind of burnt looking, but they're not really burnt, but they're the, the proteins and everything that sunk to the bottom. Whenever I do something that's real greasy and oily, I don't, we're on septic tank, but I think we just need to take good care of our plumbing anyway. But I like to uh, wipe everything out with a paper towel. And I know that's wasteful, but it is what it is. I, paper towel or my, my drains pipes. I think I'm going to go with the pipes of my house. But uh, I wipe everything down that has been in grease and oil with paper towels before I put it in the in the wash to wash it. And uh, but anyway, and that's what I'll, I'll do with this. I'll put some uh, water and some Dawn dish washing stuff in here and put it on the stove and let it simmer because this is kind of stuck. And I'll let it simmer until it loosens up and then I'll go pour it out in the gravel road and it'll be fine. Don't pour that down your sink either. So anyway, I'll I will show y'all in just a little while. I just want to make sure that right tell y'all right foam on the one that has foam because when they solidify, this is the ghee and it'll it'll look just like that. So anyway, we'll make us a sandwich here in a little bit. Okay, y'all. This is a jar that I've been using on that I made uh, April 22nd. So it's really good. See, it's just, it's spreadable because it's room temperature and it's fine. It's wonderful. It's great. You can have toast. You can just uh, smear it on some bread. You can put it on the, you can just do, it's, it's basically butter oil without all the stuff that, that you don't need in it. And I cooked us some smash burgers last night on the charcoal. And when I do that charcoal grill, you know, like I told y'all when we were doing it, I like to cook several different things so we can just snack on it all week. And today is going to be a yard day, and I don't want to mess and gum in here all day. So I have, this is just a, something that I picked up. Uh, it's by Stonewall Kitchen. It's a blue cheese herb mustard, and I like it. It uh, has a little bit of a blue cheese flavor, but it's just not over overpowering so but i'm just gonna put just a little on one side and let's get our little burger over here ah sometimes in the kitchen we have asbestos fingers don't we yes we do okay so there we go things don't have to be hard y'all sometimes things can take a while but just because things take a while does not mean that they are hard they're just time consuming. And we just do things. I'm talking about myself and to myself. I like messing and gumming in the kitchen, y'all. It makes me happy. I like hanging out with y'all. It makes me happy. I like a good old, hey, let me show you what this is. Canyon, let me come over there, okay? This, I love every product that I have bought from them. Can y'all see that? If y'all wanna take a screenshot, can you see that? Canyon Bakehouse Gluten-Free. Now, this is the Hawaiian Sweet, but um, I like everything they do. The raisin bread that they do makes the best bread pudding. So, check out this old patty melt here. Hmm, turn my fire off. Oh, y'all. Hmm. That's good stuff. Ghee. Y'all need this in your life. It'll make you happy. I'll see y'all later. Bye-bye. Go do something fun, too. Hey, y'all. It's me again, Margaret. I was editing that video, and I forgot to tell y'all something very important. And I wish y'all lived next door so I could just run over and tell you stuff. Don't mind Foghorn Leghorn over here. He's a bit of a camera hog. One of the great things about using ghee and avocado oil is that they have very, very high smoke points. Now, avocado oil, 520, this is Fahrenheit, 500 degrees Fahrenheit, and ghee is 482 degrees Fahrenheit. Regular butter is 350. Now, if you're going to stir fry and you need to cook something at a very high heat, ghee and avocado oil are going to be your, your best bets. Now, in the natural uh, fats, uh, coconut oil, the uh, smoke point is 350. 
tallow is 400, lard is 370, and olive oil is 325 to 375, depending on its, its purity. So, you know, if we've been sauteing things in olive oil for our health, that's better than, than Crisco. But, you know, at 325 at the lowest, you know, you're going to saute things hotter than that. So, ghee and avocado oil are recommended for very high uh, cooking process. And an open jar of ghee will last three months in your cabinet and one month, one year in your refrigerator. But this is the foam. And you really can't tell the difference. So I wrote foam and, and the date on that. And I'll use that when I'm making mashed potatoes and, and things like that. But anyway, y'all, I, lo I love this product. It's, uh, it's so spreadable and it's nutty. And it's just great smeared on a piece of toast because you don't have to wait for butter to melt. This melts instantaneously. So there we go. I hope this answers some of your questions on ghee. And um, I just, I'm, I'm pretty, I'm digging it. I think it's pretty swell. So I am going to see y'all later and I'm going to go do something fun. I hope you do too.